Good morning, class. This is Mr. Navinsky. Hopefully, by this time, you've already passed in your assignments to your substitute. Um, hopefully, you're being nice to your substitute today. We have a very short lesson today dealing with uh, point-slope form. It says the point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. It requires the slope and a point. Um, my expectations today for class are that you are taking notes along with the rest of class, um, as well as if you do have a question, if you could raise your hand, the substitute could pause um, this, this plane um, and could maybe replay something that I've just said. Otherwise, you can always access this recording uh, from online, or you could ask your neighbor as you're working on your assignment. We're going to follow this four-step process here. Let me just read it for you. To write the equation of a line using point-slope form, we'll first calculate the slope if it's not given to us. Generally speaking today, things will be given to us. Uh, number two, we're going to insert the slope and a point into the point-slope form. So you'll notice that I write out the equation each time, and I am actually substituting these into the point-slope form. We'll simplify uh, the form by doing dis the distribution property, and we'll then isolate the y, generally speaking, by moving all other terms to the same side of the equal sign. This will finally put this into slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, basically solving for y. This may sound complicated now, but it's really not too bad. Examples, it says write the equation in point-slope form uh, with, and the given information. So I'm going to start off by writing out the equation y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. I think it's always a good idea to write out these equations and to recognize that our point is given to us as um, an x1 and a y1. So when I write this out, I would have y minus 4, because that's my y1 over here, equals 3 times x minus, my x value is 2, so I'd say x minus 2. The next step is I'm going to distribute the 3, so I would have y minus 4 equals 3x minus 6. The next thing I want to do is I want to isolate my y, so I will add 4 to both sides. I'll have y equals 3x minus 2. I'll put a box around this and say that I'm done. Um, with this problem. y equals 3x minus 2. For number 2, again I'll identify this as x1, y1, this is my point, and I'll write out the equation y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. I always think it's a good idea to write out the formula, that way we know what we're dealing with and how things are working. So I will uh, then write this out, so I'll have y minus, my y1 here is 5, so y minus 5 equals negative 1 times x minus, since this is a negative 3, and I'm subtracting, I'm actually going to change this to positive 3, because this would say x minus a negative 3, instead I'm going to write that as x plus 3. This is probably the best way to write this as I'm writing this. My next job is I will distribute this negative sign, so I'll have y minus 5 equals negative x minus 3, and finally I'll add 5 to both sides in order to solve for y. We'll put a box around that to say that we are done. And this is in slope intercept form, where my slope is negative 1, my y intercept is 2. If I asked you, you could probably even graph this if needed to. Example 3, we'll start off the same way. This is x1, y1. I'll notice right now that my x is a 0. That's going to make things just a little bit different as we work this out. I'll still write out my equation, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. And what will happen is I'll say y minus 4 equals negative 2 times x minus 0. Now x minus 0 is the same thing as just x. So when I write this out, it'll just be y minus 4 equals negative 2 times x. If I would distribute negative 2 to negative 0 or minus 0, I would just get 0. I don't really need to write plus zero at the end of this. It doesn't really, it doesn't really matter if I write it. Um, I shouldn't write it because adding zero to something is, is a little redundant. I don't need to write plus zero at the end of everything. My final step, though, I do need to solve for y, so I'm going to add four to both sides, which will end up giving me y equals negative 2x plus four as my final answer. If I look at number three, 
Number three is pretty similar to number, um, number four, except this time my y1 is what's zero. Okay, so I'll actually make this problem quite easy. This is y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. This is in parentheses. When I substitute, that'd be y minus zero equals one half. This time it's a fraction, so I'll have to be careful when I distribute. This would be x plus two. Remember that I'm subtracting a negative number. This would be x minus a negative two is the same thing as saying x plus two. Make sure we keep that in mind. Y minus zero will just become y. When I distribute my one half, this will be one half x. And then what is half of two? Well, half of two is just one. So when I distribute, I'm actually done with this because I've now solved for y. This is in actually in slope intercept form. When you're in slope intercept form, you are done. My last problem, kind of back to normal. This is my x1, this is my y1. I'll write out the formula y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. When I substitute, I'll have y minus 6 equals negative one third x uh, plus 3. Again, the same concept here that if I have x minus a negative 3 is the same thing as x plus 3. This time when I distribute my, my slope, it becomes a little sloppy. This just becomes negative one-third x. But this time, what I want to say is I want to say, well, this is negative one-third times three. Another way to think about this is it's three times one. Now, you could multiply across and have negative one times three is negative three, divided by three times one is three, and that just simplifies down to negative one. Or another way people do this is when you're multiplying negative one-third times three, you basically cancel the threes to get negative one. Either way that you think about this, it still just becomes negative one down here. So negative one-third times three is negative one. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add six to both sides to get a final answer of y equals negative one-third x plus five. Hopefully I did each of these problems correctly <laughs> for you. Um, hopefully you were able to take pretty good notes. Your assignment is 18 problems. And honestly, I'm not sure if there's enough room on the front to actually do all this work. So what I would encourage you to do is either do all the work on the back of this piece of paper um, that you're going to be handed pretty soon, or um, what I would do is I you could actually work it out on a piece of loose leaf paper um, and then just staple that to the back. Make sure there are no fringes on that paper um, because we'll be grading it tomorrow out of 10 points as well. I hope this class was useful. I hope these things make sense to you. Again, we are working with point slope form. Uh, just remember to write out the formula. Um, calculate the slope if needed. Um, insert the items, the slope and the point into slope, point slope form. Simplify using distri distribution and then isolate the y variable. In the very end, you should always be solving and make it look like it's in slope intercept form. If you have questions, make sure to check out the blog. You can ask your substitute for help if you'd like. Uh, please work quietly. Remain in your seats as you're working. Um, it's important to me that you guys use your time wisely.